Great. Um, thanks again for joining in. Uh, let's pray and we'll get started, shall we? Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. We humble ourselves before you, you know, your, before your presence. And Lord, how wonderful and how beautiful are you, Lord. How magnificent, how holy, how lovely are you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for another day, another week uh, that, that you've added into our lives. We thank you that your faithfulness sustains us, that your mercy upholds us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that every day of our lives, you lead us, you speak to us, you guide us, you are always with us. We thank you for your promise that says you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so we thank you for everything for who you are and what you're doing in our lives, in each and every single person's lives. And Lord, uh, as we continue to read about and study about uh, your heart for us, Lord, I pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with your knowledge, with your understanding, with your wisdom, uh, to understand your heart for us, Jesus. As we study about the subject of healing and deliverance, Father, I pray that our heart will be filled with compassion just like your heart was. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Great. Um, I hope you all are doing well. Um, we were, in the, in the last class, we covered uh, a huge portion of chapter 7. Right? In, your, in your hard copies, uh, it's uh, from page 159. Uh, some of the things that uh, I just want to do a quick recap of everything we've covered. Uh, in the last class, from chapter seven is practical guidelines on ministering healing. And uh, one of the things that we highlighted was that you can speak about this same topic, uh, same points, and just change the name of the title um, to practical guidelines to receiving healing. You will have two different sermons with the same points, right? So a uh, couple of things, a few things what we learned was we uh, minister healing through the personal faith in God. Uh, through the prayer of agreement, through the prayer of faith, through a word of command, through the laying on of hands, through the announcement of faith, through acting in faith, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, through the healing anointing, through special anointings, through repentance and renunciation of sin, through deliverance, through the exercise of faith when celebrating the Lord's table, through the use of prayer cloths through un other unusual methods. Um, and that, that's where we kind of stopped at. But uh, I hope you had a chance to go through the rest of the chapter when you did. But before we move on to chapter 8, I just wanted to um, uh, talk about just a few things in chapter 7 as, as a conclusion. In, uh, again, in, you see that in page uh, 119 in your PDFs and uh, page 180 in your um, textbooks, 180 in, uh, in your hard copies. I just want to talk very really briefly about uh, getting people to exercise their faith, and we'll kind of conclude this chapter. Right? Is that okay? Are you all with me? Just give me a yes, okay, a thumbs up or whatever. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, right. So. Getting people to exercise their faith. Um, this is very important. So a few simple guidelines when encouraging people to step out and exercise their faith. Uh, do it by spirit. Right? Ensure that the Holy Spirit is prompting you to speak this to them. Otherwise, bring positive encouragement so that they do what they are comfortable doing while exercising their faith. Um, do it by the spirit be led by the holy spirit that seems to be like the theme right? that has to be the theme of everything that we do in life but especially in this ministry is just being sensitive to the leading of his spirit holy spirit what are you telling us to do what do you want me to do just being surrendered to him which leads us to the other point that says do not be presumptuous um right? for example if you're praying for a person uh you know a person comes and says please pray for my eyes uh, and you pray for them, and now you don't you don't tell them to take their glasses and okay, okay, you don't need this, throw the glasses off. Uh, you know, you don't take the place of the doctor, right? That's acting of uh, that's 
uh, just acting very ignorantly right don't be presumptuous okay um so an example mentioned here is if a person using visual aids such as glasses or contact lens say they are acting their faith and presumptuously get gets rid of their visual aids uh, there could be serious consequences on the other hand when their eyes are healed wearing glasses would be very uncomfortable for them that is the right time to take off their visual aids you you know you can ask them so uh, and and one of the things that you can always do after praying for them and after asking them to exercise their faith and you know in this context if they just prayed for their eyes instead of acting ignorantly taking their glasses and throwing it away or whatever uh you know you ask them to remove their glasses and see if they can read well like they you know and if they couldn't read well uh, and and then ask them to go back to their uh, you know to their doctor and get their eyes checked and whatnot right it's always good uh, to be led by the spirit not to be presumptuous or ignorant or act out of uh, your arrogance there's a there's a tinge of arrogance also involved in there right uh, don't let the excitement of the moment cause you to act foolishly exercise wisdom right and that will come by being led by the holy spirit uh, do not take the doctor's place right? don't give medical advice don't say okay you need to stop taking your medicines now you don't have to go to the treatment it's all done you know i prayed for you don't take the medicines and all of that you know don't take the place of the doctor okay let them do this based on the consultation with their doctor Okay, so uh, these are very important points for us to keep in mind uh, when we are ministering in healing and deliverance, right? I, I hope you guys are with me. And another thing which we've also spoken about uh, in the previous chapters is to teaching them to maintain their healing, uh, right? To, uh, you know, people need to learn how to meditate in the Word of God once they've been prayed on, uh, you know, once they've been uh, healed, right? To meditate on the word of God, to build their faith in God, to keep their healing and walk in faith. Right? I cannot walk ignorantly after. Again, we've we've spoken of so many examples, right? We, uh, um, if you've been healed of diabetes, uh, you will do. You will take every precaution uh, to walk in a healthy manner and not walk life, do life ignorantly and and open doors or create circumstances where that um, that disease can come back. Okay, and so teaching people to maintain their healing, uh, to meditate in God's word, to walk in faith, to, that builds their faith as well. Okay, um, so some of the personal preparation to minister healing, this is coming down to us now as leaders. Uh, personal preparation and how you can prepare yourself to minister healing uh, it's the foundation the fundamental and the most basic things is growing in the word of god are you growing in the word of god do you love the word of god are you steady uh, studying the word of god are you meditating on the word of god are you just letting his word dwell in your heart meditate in your heart uh, you know grow in your heart right so let the word on healing anointing miracles deliverance authority be established richly in us through continual meditation Psalm 1 is a classic example of that, isn't it? it um, our faith in God must be strong. And one of the ways faith is developed is through the word of God. So grow in the word. Ask yourself if you're growing in the word. Uh, growing in the anointing. Okay, so grow in the word, grow in the anointing. Uh, you know, develop deep communion and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Uh, praying in tongues, worshipping Him, setting aside time. Uh, to just grow in that intimate uh, relationship with him is key. And that is how you grow in the anointing. And you also grow in anointing by serving under other leaders or other ministers of God uh, who are in this ministry, right? Um, which is very important as well. So desire for more of his presence, more of his power, uh, and uh, pay the price, uh, any price that needs to be paid to grow in the anointing. Okay, um, and because that 
the same anointing that all these great generals of God has functioned under, you know, from Charles Spurgeon to John G. Lake, uh, to anybody that you want to mention, Catherine Kuhlman or Benny Hinn, et cetera, et cetera, whoever you want to mention, who's had a very successful healing ministry. It, it's the same Jesus who anoints them. And it's the same Jesus who wants to anoint us and fill us. Right. Um, and the, Again, it all comes down to your question, your your side of the equation is how far or how much of the price are you willing to pay? Right? Are you willing to go after him, uh, to seek him more? Right? So growing in the word, growing in the anointing, uh, growing in intimacy through obedience, prayer, worship and fasting, uh, maintaining purity of uh, heart. Uh, we must maintain a pure heart. We must guard our hearts from wrong motivations, from competition, jealousy, pride, and self. Um, this is one of the reasons why we do, uh, during the orientation of BC, uh, we do this, we cover our APC publication, Laying the Axe to the Root. If you remember, I think we did this for you guys also. Right, laying the axe to the root, and there we cover all of these things. Right, guard your heart from jealousy, of uh, or from pride. Uh, it will absolutely kill you, destroy your your destroy you personally, and also your ministry, right, your relationship with other people and whatnot. So, uh, do everything uh, in your, you know, in with your within your power to protect your heart, to guard your heart. Um, to constantly keeping that prayer, saying, search me and know me, see if there is any wicked ways in me, allowing God to look into your heart and say, Lord, uh, let my heart be steadfast. Let my heart be steadfast. Let my heart be steadfast. Let my heart be humble before you. I am your servant. Let not jealousy or pride enter me at any point in time. Uh, right? Because this is very clearly the downfall of uh it can be the downfall, and I think I've 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 been in ministry as a Christian and in ministry long enough to see that uh, that how these two things have destroyed people. That is jealousy and pride. Um, you, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Correct, uh, right? It will just absolutely ruin your life. So do everything in your mind to guard your heart, to protect your heart. You guys, with me? Yeah. Um, so grow in word, grow in anointing, grow in intimacy through obedience, prayer, worship, and fasting, and maintain purity of heart. Uh, grow in faith through stepping out. Grow in faith through stepping out. Uh, time and time again, we've spelled faith as risk, isn't it? R I S K. So you take that step of risk, and you know, and and that's how you will grow in faith. Uh, take the step of faith and pray for the individual that you see that needs to be prayed for. Uh, don't be afraid. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to give you the spirit of boldness because he has given us the spirit of boldness and courage. right? And finally, always giving God all the glory. Always, 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 always. Give God all the glory. Right, um, so you guys with me? So this is these are all just fundamental, basic points for any Christian, any believer, to grow in. Right, so you grow in the Word, you grow in anointing, intimacy, through obedience, prayer, worship, and fasting, uh, maintaining purity of heart, uh, growing in faith through stepping out, and always giving God all the glory. Right, and if all this is set in place, your on the way to a very successful ministry right you guys with me alive so, okay um okay now let's uh, go into the next um uh, um chapter chapter 8 a simple model for ministering healing right a simple model for ministering um healing um one of the key points in this course is uh, it's one of the many is that uh it's not only the pastors or the evangelists or teachers who can uh, minister in healing and deliverance but the point is to encourage every believer 
to step out and um, and minister healing and deliverance okay and so out of that uh, in the last chapter we learned about some some of the guidelines to minister in healing and deliverance and this chapter we'll we we'll look at a model okay so a uh, model for ministering healing so what is a uh, when, when you when you say okay this is a model to uh, minister healing or this is a model to do something uh, why is it important you in do you think it's important to follow a a model or, or a blueprint do you think it's important to have a, some kind of a blueprint before we start building something Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> right, so, you know, this chapter is built upon uh, the, uh, the teaching by John Wimber. Uh, this is called a five step uh, model. Which is presented by John Wimber. Now, John Wimber is the founder of Vineyard Ministries. Uh, John Wimber used to work for a corporate company for the longest time, and one day he gets frustrated about, okay, okay, you know, about his life, saying, "What am I doing uh, for His kingdom and whatnot?" He uh, and so he starts this ministry, which which is now popularly known as Vineyard. Uh, most of you would have heard it, and it's, it was a beautiful moment uh, in the 80s and the 90s. A lot of churches have been planted worldwide, and uh, so many songs have been birthed out of this movement, uh, which was started by John Wimber, uh, the founder of Vineyard Churches. Right? So, um, we we learn of a, you know uh, a five step model to how to minister healing, but what I want us to keep in mind is that this is not the only way to minister healing okay but it is a, a simple model uh, that has been taught and it's been effective uh you know bearing powerful fruit in, in so many people's lives and so that's what we will be looking at today in this chapter okay uh, another point that i want to reiterate uh is that as we go through these different steps or uh, this as we go through this model uh, remember that the healing is in the person of Jesus Christ. Healing is in His presence and not in the process, right? Um, so, having said that, let's look at the first step in this model of uh, ministering healing. Uh, the first thing is what we. The first step is what we is called as the interview, right? So, a person comes to uh, you know for prayer, requests for prayer, and you begin by asking, okay, what would you like me to pray for? Okay, uh, where does it hurt, etc. Right? What can I pray for? Um, so you begin with that question. Okay, now um, please note that you may we may not have you know the time to ask all these questions. Uh, you know, all the time, people will sometimes you have fifty people, hundred people coming to just pray. And sometimes you might have the chance or the opportunity to ask them, or and there will be times where you will not have the time or, or the chance to ask them. So it's okay. Remember, this is just a model. Okay, uh, it's a good place to start. It's a good reference point for us to learn to minister healing and deliverance. And so ask them, okay, uh, where does it hurt, or what would you like me to pray for? Um, you know, a couple, some of the questions that we can ask is, uh, what is your name? uh you know what would you like to pray for um and then you know once you have that you can ask okay, how long have you had this condition uh do you know what the cause is have you seen a doctor what the what does the doctor say uh, about this uh, do you remember what was happening in your life and this condition started did anything traumatic happen to you about the time your condition began or within a few months prior to starting uh, so uh do you see what I mean by that? You will not always have the time to ask all these questions, right? Uh, so it's okay 
if you don't get to ask all these questions. It's just a reference point and see what kind of question is appropriate at that point of time for you to take that step. Okay, most of the time, uh, at least in from my experience, it's been, uh, what is your name? Um, that is just to get more personal and to pray for them specifically. If you if you don't have the time to get what their prayer request is uh, and whatnot, if there if there's a lot of crowd and whatnot, uh, what I would suggest or encourage you to do is to at least get their name, and so you can pray for them by their name. Okay, so you ask for their name and then you ask them for their condition. Uh, you know what can i pray for uh, is there anything specific that i can pray for how did it happen what did the doctor say about it etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, that is the first step right because you're getting specific about it you're not just doing a random prayer you need to know okay it's the pain in the right wrist or the left wrist it's a certain x-ray uh, you know that says a certain fracture uh, and whatnot so you, as you get more specific you get to speak to that condition directly Right, you say, for example, okay, it's the left wrist uh, that's broken, uh, and if it's a certain, and if the person even says that this is a certain bone because every bone has its own name, but they say, okay, and you speak to that particular bone, to that condition, to that fracture, in the, you know, and you declare the name of Jesus over that. Uh, it's all about getting specific, isn't it? So that's what this step is all about. So once you finish the step one, you kind of begin the diagnosis. Um, you can ask begin to ask yourself and them uh, why do they have this condition right um, so this step is about identifying the root of the person's problem there's again if possible and uh, now this step is not always necessary okay this step is not always necessary but it's helpful uh, in as we minister healing and deliverance to this, this person okay so now, in the first step, you're in, you're asking all these questions to the individual, saying, "Okay, what's your name? What's the condition? What can I pray for, and whatnot?" As you are listening to this person, you must also listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Right, uh, your heart is in line as you're listening to this person, and you you know it's a uh, uh, yeah, it's like multitasking i guess okay so you are listening to this person intently and you are also asking the holy spirit holy spirit uh help me out here what do you have to speak to this person what do you have to say about this person how do you want me to minister to this person right and so at that point of time as the person has finished sharing the holy spirit may give you a, a word of knowledge a, a vision or a picture or, or something some insight for you to in helping you to minister to that individual right so uh, this step again is called as the diagnosis as why they have this condition it's not always necessary but then uh, if you go through this step there may be several reasons as to why you may think that this individual has a certain condition right it could be several right it could be a natural cause a disease or an accident or uh, it could be a sin committed by them or to them, uh, right? Uh, emotional hurts causing physical or other pain, relationship problems, a lack of forgiveness, or or supernatural, uh, and it could, and maybe demonic, right? For example, let's say a person uh, comes and shares, uh, you know, and and they say that they haven't been able to forgive a certain individual because they've hurt them you you immediately know what the issue is it's uh, unforgiveness that has led to bitterness and you kind of ask them okay how long ago was this you know this person did something 10 years ago and this person has been dwelling on it for 20 you know 10 years uh, you know they've been holding that offense in their heart and that's led to uh, that offense has led to unforgiveness and that unforgiveness has led to bitterness and bitterness has opened the door for the, the the demonic to you know take a foothold in their lives and so you immediately know what what the condition is and what has caused the condition and now you know to what you have to speak to and declare to Wait, are you guys with me are you guys following what uh, you know uh, the importance of this step Right, I hope you are with me. Right. Um, so again, uh, to reiterate, 
as you're listening to the person, it is extremely important. You're not just praying, you know, for this person. It's like, see, as Christians, as ministers, as leaders, we get used to praying to a lot of people, right? Uh, maybe at the beginning of the service or the end of the service, people come to say, like, Pastor, can you pray for me? And whatnot. And, and it is very easy for us to treat that individual like, okay, let me just pray and move on in life because I'm very tired. It's very easy. But um, so, you know, there's one thing I learned. Uh, I used to work in a call center between 2005 to 2009. It's quite some time ago. Uh, I, so, and I would take approximately a day. On an average, I would get 100 calls. So that's 100 different customers. Okay. Um, so one thing what I learned is they would say, look, guys, you know, it's true that you might be getting a hundred calls a day. That means it's a hundred different customers. Uh, and for me, it's a hundred different customers, but for them, it's their first call to you. Are you with me? So they are not going to understand that you, they are they are the sixtieth person to call you. They are the ninety ninth person to call you. So you don't expect them to understand that you are tired and whatnot. You treat them as as if they are your first customer. Okay, this is just a little corporate insight. Uh, and so similarly for us as leaders, as Christian leaders, as pastors. It's very easy for us to get into that zone, say, okay, let me just pray and get on, move on with life types. But uh, every individual's challenge uh, is, is important. And that's why they come to you for prayer. Uh, and, and we pray and we minister to them in the name of Jesus. We are, you know, we are in the place of Jesus, right? When we say, I minister to you in the name of Jesus, you are in the place of Jesus to them, and you would minister to them. Your heart ought to be filled with compassion for that individual. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Um, and so you gauge uh, what you know, what they are going through, and what the Holy Spirit wants to do in their lives. Um, so that is the second step of diagnosing their condition, and that leads to. Uh, and now, okay, so you know what the problem is. You know who they are. You know what's causing their condition, etc. And now you uh, decide on the method or method selection, what kind of method to use when ministering. Okay, what kind of method you want to use for ministering. Okay, you remember what we've learned? It's not about the method or the process. It's in the person of Jesus and his presence. Okay, but then you choose a method to, to minister. Uh, some of the common uh, ways to, uh, you know, some of the common methods you know, is laying on of hands, anointing with oil, uh, petition, simply inviting the Holy Spirit, ask for healing, intercessory prayer, uh, the command of faith, pronouncement of faith, uh, binding and rebuking demonic powers, forgiving and renouncing past hurts and wounds. Okay. Uh, a couple of things to watch out for. Uh, one of the common ways, as mentioned, is laying down, uh, laying on of hands. Uh, now, what what I'd like to do is, uh, be it uh, the same sex person or the opposite sex, male or female, I'd like to get the permission of the person. I ask them, is okay. Uh, is it is it okay if I lay my hands uh, on your head? Is it okay if I if I hold your hands? Um, and and I think it's it's a, it's a good thing to do, right? Uh, because you don't know uh, how an individual might feel. Someone some might feel okay and comfortable with you laying your hands on them, and another individual might not. It doesn't matter their gender. It could be male or female. It doesn't matter. But as soon as you ask their permission, and I think it allows it, uh, it's almost like they are allow, they are okay. They're letting you they're letting you know you in, to say okay, yes, you can come and lay your hands on, on me, right? Or you could, if they are not, uh, you know, you, you could ask another person to lay their hands uh, on that person wherever it's hurting. Or you could ask that person to do that for themselves. Okay, so uh, laying on of hands, anointing with oil. Um, petition, intercessory prayer. Um, 
forgiving and renouncing past hurts and wounds that that is you know lead the person in a prayer to forgive those who have wrong or uh Sorry, I thought something was wrong there. You lead the person in a prayer to forgive those who have who may have wronged or repent of doing wrong to others. Uh, right? Again, these are all uh, some of the methods, ways in how you can minister uh, to to the person that you are ministering to. Okay. Um, there is an example that is mentioned in your notes. Let's take a look at it. Um, for example, here is a ministry that is a combination of several things. Uh, let us say a person named John has several problems in their lower back due to an injury. Uh, here is one way to minister. Okay, It's one of the ways to minister. Uh, you say, if possible, John, uh, place your hand, uh, you know, you say, place your hand on their back or have someone else place their hand on, their, on the person's back. Um, you would then minister saying, in Jesus' name, I bind and cast out any spirit of infirmity affecting John's back. Uh, in Jesus' name, I command healing to John's back. I command healing to the vertebrae, discs, and nerves, and command these to go into their proper place. Come Holy Spirit, release your healing virtue on John's back and make him completely well in Jesus' name. Okay, uh, this is again one of the ways uh, to minister uh, to a person, one of the methods that you can use. There's multiple methods that's involved there. Uh, here. Okay, uh, any thoughts, any questions, guys, so far? Okay, all right. Uh, let's move on to the next section. Um, the ministry, ministering and watching what God is doing. Okay, uh, the ministry itself, as you are praying now, uh, you also watch what God is doing, right? So while we are ministering, uh, we would normally keep our eyes open to see what God is doing. Uh, don't have to but you can keep your eyes closed as well uh you know but you know as we as we see slight improvements we are we are being encouraged and we are encouraging the person to act in faith as well right? and so you ask the person if they feel anything or do they feel any difference um you know and most of the time someone would say you know they would say okay i feel like a heat going through or like a wind that's blowing etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you know uh if you try one kind of prayer or command and uh, get results but not complete healing uh continue to explain to the person that god wants to uh god wants them completely well right and so you you continue to pray for them, saying, "Okay, you know, I I could not stretch my hands fully. For example, if you've been playing for praying for their uh, for their elbow or whatnot, they're saying I could not stretch it out fully, but I'm able to stretch out so much, and my pain has reduced." Uh, you continue to pray and say, "Okay, can I continue to pray, saying God wants to heal you completely and whole?" Right? So you continue to pray uh, and whatnot. So. And in this process, another important question to ask is, uh, when do we stop? Right. So you, okay, now you've prayed, you've seen partial improvement, partial healing that this person has received. Uh, when do you stop? A couple of pointers for us to remember is, you can stop when the person is completely healed. That's one thing, right? Uh, and oh, when the person says, when the person wants you to stop, it's like, okay, pastor, I think it's enough. It's okay. Um, you don't say no no i will pray for you uh no matter what uh they will not come back to your church <laughs> uh right so when the person wants you to stop you know, respect that honor that uh when the holy spirit tells you to stop saying hey that's enough be sensitive and just stop uh or you're not given any other way to pray or you're not gaining any ground you know if you see okay uh okay there's you've prayed the person has not told you anything what you can do is okay 
this way what i will say is uh, um not sure if this is right about the common sense okay let's <laughs> be okay you know you've pushed enough you've tried enough but you say okay uh you know you can go back home continue to pray uh and we will continue to pray for you and uh and you know you encourage the person and say oh, god will come to god will heal you completely okay uh, so those are the few pointers for us to remember uh as we are ministering uh healing and deliverance uh, the key important points is to uh, make it personal uh you know diagnose what they're going through um and then you minister to them and uh, you choose a method that you want to minister in and uh and be sensitive to when you have to stop okay um and finally the post ministry suggestions uh what should they do to keep their healing right uh, what should they do to keep their healing um so if the opportunity arises speak to the person about their personal salvation if they are not yet saved right so if they are not yet saved speak to the person about the personal salvation so uh, an, an unbeliever a non-believer comes and pray uh, and asks for prayer once you prayed for them and you present the gospel to them uh, right you uh, and say uh, you know this is available the gift of eternal life is available through jesus christ are you willing to accept so you're presenting the gospel right uh, about you talk to them about their personal salvation uh, and um, and then you also continue to tell them say you know you, you talk about what john chapter 5 verse 14 says uh, you know after jesus heals the crippled man he says sin no more lest a worse thing come up on you right so you encourage them to spend time with god uh, to stay involved with the church if they are not connected to a church you encourage them to get connected or help them get connected to one of the local churches that you might know of uh, in the vicinity or get their number their contact details and keeping in touch with them making sure that they are plugged into one of the churches uh, is is an important method post ministry right um, what if they are not healed uh, this is again a question that we've addressed in the previous chapters but reassure them that god loves them right encourage them to keep on in faith and continue to pray persevere in faith right uh, one of the things that we should not do or avoid at all cost is to accuse the person uh you are not healed because of generational curse or some hidden sin or you are not because you, you have little faith you lack faith uh you know we will never take the place of accusation or accuse the person saying you are not being you are not healed because of this 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 uh we do not say that at all we encourage the person saying god loves you it is his nature and his desire to see you made whole right uh, and so we are only his instruments if the healing does not happen uh, we just need to press into him and seek him more and um, so these are the five-step uh, model to uh, minister healing, right? So what are they? First thing is the interview. You ask them, where does it hurt? What would you like me to pray for? Second is the diagnosis, right? Why do they have this condition, the root cause or root causes? Uh, and you, the method of selection, right? You choose which method that you want to uh, pray or you minister right um the ministry the ministering you watch them as you are ministering as you are praying for them you see what is happening you see what god is doing um okay and then post ministry suggestions is uh what should they do to keep their healing and the importance of getting connected to a church and whatnot all right guys are you all with me uh, do you have any questions or thoughts that you want to ask or share All right, then, uh, there are no questions. We'll uh, stop our session. Let me just stop recording.
uh, this session.